We're here at Launch Radio, Jeff and Kira. Hello, everybody. Episode 23. Episode 23. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's been a couple weeks. It has. You know? Um, I was sick, but like everyone else has the plague. Um, you know. What is that noise? I do not. Oh. It's <laughs> it's that, that like... Oh. Yeah. Like the odometer. Yes. We're not the most technical <laughs> people in the world. Well, I mean... But... We try. We try. We're our own producers for the moment. We, we, we are our own technical producers because I'm terrible with tech stuff. <laughs> um, she's much better than I am, but um, neither of us match what these like tech producers in... You know. One day, Jeff. I feel like it's coming soon. I feel like 2020 is going to be the... I think January is, gonna, is when things are going to start to evolve. You do. Because I see it in the simulation. I'm, I'm, I'm programming it right the now. <laughs> <laughs> the the, uh, the simulation the simulation is uh, is is really something um this is like a hot topic we we've discussed this at least one other time maybe twice Two months ago times, but it's two months ago you know it's hard for i think people to understand unless you're not like for me when i first heard about it i'm like i'm sorry metaphysics what <laughs> like what are you talking about and like, yeah, I went to college, but it doesn't mean I know like astrophysicist kind of stuff. And like, mm -hmm. the more you read articles about it, your head is like spinning. So it's kind of like the Truman Show yep. is a really good or Matrix type of movie that, you know, scientists believe um, like Elon Musk and Neil deGrasse uh, Tyson that we are in a simulated uh, reality. And um, so we want to kind of deep dive into that a little bit more today. I've, and we're going to dive into it. And I feel like a couple, um, let's make a couple of grand statements just about it before we start. I, I think that things that people should know is, first of all, nothing is uh, 100% certain. I mean, I, I mean, nobody has, you know, for sure 100%, you know, this is happening or this is not. Um, you know, we we discuss it here because it's an interesting topic. Um, whether we are in a simulation or not, we don't know. That's one. And two, if if the simulation exists, it could be anything. It doesn't necessarily mean computers. It could be something out of our understanding of what it is. Right. It, it could mean anything. I mean, it literally could mean anything. So I think that we people jump to conclusions about, you know, that people think this is 100% true or that it's 100% this or that. And really, from what I've read and seen, what we've, come, what we've discussed before, like all possibilities are open. There's all, anything could be happening. We, well, we don't know for sure. Well, I think that's how all things are. It's, it's quite hard, you know, when we were talking about medical stuff before we started the podcast, um, not even doctors know what the entire brain does. You yeah. know, so if we don't even know our own bodies and we still haven't discovered certain things, they just discovered um, not long ago how important the stomach is and that the stomach actually uh, has its own brain in it. Really? You know, and, and the emotions that you feel actually carries it, it. It takes out so much serotonin more so than your brain. And that was never even new. You know, no one even knew that. So I think it's things like that that, you know. You start to question what's real and what's not, and how much is fact and what's not, and is there actual evidence of certain things? And and because we don't even know our own bodies, we can't even possibly um, be a hundred percent sure of of something that's so universe, you know, reality. Um, because there's no real way to test it and to prove it that we're in some kind of computer um, mm -hmm. simulation. I think that, I mean, as far as I can tell, we all seem real. I mean, Kira, you seem real I mean, I can to me. You I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so it's true. And so. Well, it's funny because I was reading this, um, this quote by this uh, professor, uh, technology university professor, philosophy professor, uh, Preston Green, 
He penned a uh, New York Times op-ed and he said, we should stop looking for evidence of this simulation theory because proving the universe is simulated would probably render the simulation useless for whoever is running it. Meaning we could all get scrapped like a wayward family in the Sims. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so in other words, if we know if we know that we're in a simulation, it could be like a bug in the system, and they might turn the lights out. They could be like potentially, potentially could cause a quote unquote the annihilation of our universe if uh -uh. we continue to dig and find the hole in. Oh, oh man. Wow. Kind of like Truman's show. He had to run his boat into the wall. The wall. And he's like, what? I'll tell you what. Can you imagine if you ran your car into something and, and you see people behind the scenes and it's all this computer? I oh. mean, that Elon Musk is launching rockets. He's looking for the roof up there. I mean, he's. <laughs> Is that what he's, he's doing? He's trying he, to find the roof he, of the universe? He's going to get us all in trouble because he's he's doing the right? Truman Show. He could be he could be causing a, the annihilation of the universe as, as we know it because whoever's running this so-called simulation that we are all in would be like, unplug. Right. So in, so this author's saying, just leave things alone. Right. Just, just, just continue with your daily life and live in your own little magical world. Go and back to Facebook, everybody. Oh, right. Just to... Believe everything you read. Just continue being a sim. Yeah, just, just be a happy <laughs> sim and live that way or non-sim. Correct. Stop digging because if you dig, those that are, that are controlling the programming may just turn the off button off on the whole thing. So, okay. So what part, you know, but, I feel like simulation has like, multiple levels to it it's yeah. like okay do you believe that there's a what like an an entity there that's running the whole show or do you you know i mean you're much more well versed in the simulation <laughs> kind of stuff than i am i mean i'm somewhat but but here's the thing okay so if what you were just saying first off the one entity well if we're worried about them turning the lights off on the sims because digging but but like what is how does how does religion tie in with the stimulation theory because if we're if we're digging through meaning through religion couldn't the lights also be turned off like by <laughs> god by whatever god right religion? well or that's a program that we were fed of like yes there's a god and yeah just believe there's a god up there right. meanwhile behind the scenes there's there's the computer nerd programming and algorithm of the whole thing right S so I was telling, I was telling Jeff before we got on the podcast, um, my boyfriend and I went to the Natural History Museum a couple of months ago and I'm like walking around and uh, I think that was a, right after our first simulation theory um, discussion. Podcast. Yeah. And uh, we're walking around seeing all these massive dinosaur bones and all these like incredible things um, from 15 million years ago. And it's like, and I whispered to him and I said, wouldn't it be hilarious if this just all made up? I mean, how could you prove it? Right. No humans were alive back then. Right. Um, what if it's just a program that we're being fed that yeah, there were dinosaurs before us, just so it helps our brain yeah. understand that we, there was actually a beginning and end to the world. Whereas maybe someone just flipped a switch in the back and said, hey, you're here. And I think we've talked about, or I think you had talked about it before on your YouTube, where um, are your memories manufactured? Mm -hmm. Are they implanted or Im implanted or are they actual reality, you know, and your perception of like what we're actually remembering? Correct. You know, um, and, and you weren't there when you were born. Your parents were born there. Yeah. But they weren't there for their. So it continues to go back. Yeah. You know, and, and how do you know, how do you know your memories are actually real? Well, the whole memory thing is, is interesting. But what you're also saying about the, about dinosaurs, yeah, it reminds me of that. How do you say mem? Meme? Meme? Okay, I can't say mem. It reminds me of that meme, that meme. I got it finally. The mem? There's a meme where like, it's like Lisa Simpson and she's on stage and she's like, uh, the problem with dinosaurs is we don't actually know what they sounded like. Oh. So 
we see dinosaurs in the movies and we see them sounds and like the T-Rex oh. growling, but like <laughs> we have no proof those things made noise. Like we have no proof that they exist. So we think they walk around going like Jurassic Park and like so, <laughs> like who made who made up that? Well, you know, it's and interesting. So, to that point, they just discovered Yeah. I mean, maybe a month ago. A piece of bone that actually has the skin on it still and feathers. So now they believe that dinosaurs had all of these gorgeous colors to them. So everything in our brain was these green, brown, right. Godzilla look. They're showing peacock colors all the way down. So they could be like, they could be like, a, they, I mean, they're showing yellow. Go to, yeah, they're blue and pinks like a bird. Or like, and they're feathers. Like, wait, dinosaurs had feathers. They had like a, a thick feather. For, I mean, we're talking dinosaurs, not like the the term, you know, the yeah, uh, the flying dinosaurs. So, so we have no proof what even color these things Correct. are. Correct. They could be, you know, look like anything. So, my question is: Are the dinosaurs and are things like that? Are is God is religion a program that was fed to us that that's actually part of the simulation to make ourselves feel better about that we are actually human beings and not being controlled by a program? Or is that all us digging to find a deeper level of higher consciousness? Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that is, a, that is a very big question. And I think that a lot of people would, I think probably everyone would like to know the answer of that. And the fact is, we just don't know. Yeah, but how many people actually question if the dinosaurs are real? Do you question if the dinosaurs are actually real? Yes. <laughs> but, I qu but I question everything that I don't see directly or hear. If it's not like in my, I don't know so that what it do you? What are your thoughts on religion and what... Well, programs where we may be being fed. <laughs> My thoughts on it are I was raised Presbyterian Christian. And so I, you know, have seen that with my, you know, I, I've been a part of that, seen that, but it's been a process of it. You know, it's been, pro like I've seen it in my life as part of a process. I was baptized. I did all of that Christianity. And I know that you know, that that is religion is is very important. And people I, I believe people should have religion, um, that it's a big part of, you know, the human process and, and spirituality, all all very important. However, bringing in this this simulation thing to it all, those they don't have to exist um, one or the other. You can still be Christian and, and also believe that simulation is part of it because in in some ways they're saying similar things you believe what you want to believe you see you know in which in your process what you're seeing what you're watching like you can have both at the same time it doesn't have to be one or the other so my opinion on that is you can have you can have both however i think it does bring in the question which i think is what you were getting at is our is religion just fed to us a nice little story but i think but i think it religion you're kind of saying the same thing yeah so is religion masking so if you're the saying actual computers like is it like a nice like cushiony hey there's a god there's religion when actually that's truly, interesting it's it's a computer it's a simulator that's much easier to absorb um that there's a higher being and the, he created the earth than there's a joe blow who's running an algorithm running the, the earth. The higher beings, some people could be Joe Blow. <laughs> and we just well, know. that's what I mean. So then I agree with you. I think religion um, brings in a, a code of ethics into society. Yes. And, and with it not being a, a big proponent, that's when our values start to slip and we don't have a, a, a due north, a true north mm -hmm. of like right, wrong, all of that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. society... I th but if you go back to the simulation theory, was that built in order to create uh, less chaos? If you didn't have, you know, whoever c created the simulation. Programmed it. Programmed it so that, yes, we all 
we all believe right and wrong and, mm. and we all find our true north path and and because if we didn't have something to believe in it would be chaos if people don't have something to believe in if 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 we okay so let's talk about that that's interesting so if everybody knew that we were in a simulation if if we knew 100% sure yeah how would the world change in that way how would it change well according to uh mr green he says <laughs> that it would be the annihilation of our universe because then we've why we've we've hit our boat into the side and we found and we discovered we would ruin it why over creating it would be like well now now the jig's up would they or what happens then uh, we'll have to ask jim carrey for a Truman show <laughs> part two <laughs> i think jim carrey like jim carrey's had like this awakening i think he actually went through the truman show i think so too that, because i mean happened. i don't know if you guys have ever seen you know the, the documentary um andy and me uh with, you know it was about him transforming into Andy yeah. Kaufman and and really it was about Jim Carrey and his life, but he has gone through some massive, massive transformation is in terms of consciousness and just incredible. If really? you haven't seen the documentary, it's I highly recommend it. You know, there's a reason why you don't see him too much anymore because he's on a way different playing field now. He doesn't do movies anymore. No, and he's an artist and he's like, you know, yeah. You, yeah. you especially should watch it. It's very good. Um so I think that's I think that's interesting. And I think that, you know, by no means I, I think there needs to, people need to stop necessarily thinking that it needs to be one or the other as far as, you know, do you have a religion or do you believe in the simulation? Like you can believe in both at the same time, I, like really believe that. And I, I don't think that people. I don't want to tell people not to have their religion, you know what I'm saying? I think religion is important. I think it's good people have it, like I said. Um, but I think you can still remain open to the simulation while having your religion. I mean, I certainly do. I still consider myself Presbyterian and, and Christian. Um, so I think that I, I think that there's been a lot of and, and also another thing, like I mentioned earlier, is the simulation doesn't necessarily mean computers. It could mean anything. And I think that you have to really wonder, like, um, where are things ultimately going to go? from here like what is next and, and the tech and technology and the internet and um social media are changing the way people perceive the reality around them because we're able to see things much quicker and information's traveling much faster at like a higher speed isn't that interesting and because information is being transferred quicker, it's changing the way we're seeing uh, reality happening around us. I see it because everything's coming so quick. Yeah. And to be conspiracy theory, maybe because everything's coming so quickly, it's to veer us away from thinking that from really absorbing things and taking a moment. And being like, wait a second, you know, mm -hmm. everything's coming so fast and we need information right now that maybe it's part of the simulation in the sense that let's veer them off track so that they stay hyper focused on. The it's a distraction. Things. It's a distraction because it's like, oh, here, mm -hmm. stop, stop trying to figure things out. Just absorb all the information. We'll make things go faster. So that you have to absorb even more information, so you don't have time to think about what's going on in the universe. That's interesting. Boom! Boom! Literally. Drop the mic. I mean, that's <laughs> it. She, Kira has discovered the secret of the universe. I mean, oh, absolutely no, but like that's interesting. Um, it, you know, is AI like the good guy or the bad guy? I mean, the I think that's always the, the crux guy. of you know, um, any topic that we talk about generally goes back to where does AI fit in and where's the balance and is it good or bad? And, you know, I'm watching this amazing show on Netflix. You would really love it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's called To Live With Yourself. It's Paul Rudd's new show. It's amazing. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, I'm like obsessed with it. To Live With Yourself. Yeah, I think it's like Live With Yourself. Check this out. So, 
Let me see. Uh, living with yourself. Living with yourself. It's so good. And I'm not plugging it because um, cause I'm getting money for it, but uh, because I'm not. Um, <laughs> it's actually an amazing show. Uh, here is a guy who... This looks really interesting. Oh, it's fascinating. You would adore it. Yeah. Um, here's a guy who, you know, life kind of is just moping along, you know? Uh -huh. Makes good money. Job sucks. The You know, they can't get pregnant with uh, him and his wife. You know, it's just kind of like everyday common uh life struggles you know and he just feels like crap like a lot of people do where you're just like in this rat race where it's just like oh you know um and he gets a card a business card from a colleague of his who he's in competition with at work a, a bit and he's like this is game changing mm -hmm. he goes to the spa and uh the spa <laughs> clones him by accident. So then now there's two of him and trying to fit. And it's the AI medical, like it can't, they were like, we were supposed to genetically create a super you, but we screwed up and created two of you. So there's two of him, one of the worst part of him and the part that's like the most amazing part. Walking around. Walking around. And <laughs> It's amazing, but it really wow. takes into, you know, it sounds insane. It sounds like, you know, oh, that sounds futuristic, but it really isn't. With all the things happening in genetics and what we can do, and, and um, it's, it's quite possible. What's the line mm -hmm. where AI becomes too much of a problem? And, you know, there's one of us so where he cuts a piece of his wife's hair to take it to them. Yeah. And they're he's like, You want us to clone your wife? That is so beyond in a like out of medical practices and you know, all of that stuff, you know? Um where does it where's the line draw in terms of making all illnesses go away and mm -hmm. all um you know, everything so that everyone lives until they're 150, mm -hmm. you know, we'll mm -hmm. be overpopulating the world. Um, so at what point does AI need to back up and just say, well, what are we doing genetically wise? Uh, what are we doing from these perspectives? You would adore this show. You have to watch it. And yeah. you guys haven't watched it. Watch. It does remind me of that film Multiplicity with Michael Keaton. Did it is, but this is that? far better. Far better? <laughs> okay. I adore Michael Keaton. He's a fellow Pittsburgher. However, um, <laughs> this one, I think he would agree that that was not his finest moment in film. You did see that movie. I, of course, he's my, yeah. Wow. yeah. He's a, you know, he's a small town. Yeah. You got you to root for the small guys. <laughs> yeah. You know. John Hamm, St. Louis. Same, yeah, same thing. Jeff Goldberg, Goldberg from uh, Squirrel Hill. That's right. Jeff Goldberg? Yes. Oh, yeah. Did I say Goldberg? Goldberg. Ah, uh, blue. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I know my Pittsburghers. Um, <laughs> um, yes. So, it's similar to that. Mm -hmm. Only, it's a little bit darker. Okay. It's not so, f it's funny in certain cases, but it makes you think and you're like, what the F? And it's super plausible kind of stuff. I'd be um, really interested to see how they deal with that concept idea. Um, and I feel like it, you know. So it, that at what point, you know, you watch these, these movies that are coming out like uh, Ex Machina, I think was one. Ex Machina, yeah. Whatever. Ex Machina, yeah. yeah. Um, that was really interesting. That was really interesting mm -hmm. where AI is take we create this thing that then takes over mm -hmm. you know it's almost too smart for our own good i f yeah i i feel like well you know one of the big themes to sim simulation theory that some people have discussed is the idea of that there could be hundreds of kiras or thousands of kiras oh, or Jeff, there's only one billions <laughs> of <laughs> <laughs> only one. Let me brush that shoulder off. Or something um, <laughs> that are that are living simultaneously right next to each other across the universe divide, and that you are the like the one Kira on this frame path going, and that right next door there's one that's slightly different, slightly different, slightly different, slightly different, all the way, because it's like they don't 
understand that's a complex thing to understand but they don't understand why that would be but that ties into it would that be like parallel universe then where i'm like i'm living in a different parallel universe that there could be billions of you yes in in parallel universes that are just not living all at the same time at the same time at the same time at the same time so there's like here in japan doing the like in a different yeah world in a different frame how does that work biology though and genetics like is that always of the same genes i mean you are you ultimately but there could be billions of you it's all still you it's all the same essence of you there's sometimes guys where there's podcasts um (laughs) that (laughs) jeff will talk and it'll be like Mandela stuff. And I'll I'll look out the window and I'm like, okay, I'm going to need a nap after this. <laughs> because, because it hurts the brain to try and like wrap your head around certain stuff. And that's what he just said was one of them. She has Where like mind cannot blows. Well, there's a reason why there's people that don't want to take the ancestry DNA because they're concerned of like, here's my DNA. Who knows what the F you're going to do with it. That like another you could show up at your door for the spot or, or hey we're overpopulated on the earth these people have terrible genes you get to go on a truck and we're gonna go ship you off to you know well the garbage can well that's the that's the medical future well that's <laughs> you, why you know that's I'm... coming where we're gonna and she's like here goes my brain again <laughs> um where where uh no they're they're going to one day human disposal they're going to be able to find out from your genes, what you're most susceptible to, from your genetics, like lit- they're already doing it. On, well, yeah. On and, um, what's it called? Twenty three and Me. They already can do that, but it's going to get much more. Ancestry just came out of it. Advanced, yes. You have to pay money each month, and it'll tell you like, hey, you're going to be prone to heart disease. Yes. You're going to be prone to cancer. You know. Um, it's going to be that times a million. I'm prone to macular degeneration and celiac disease. <laughs> That's what mine said. So I take a lot of lutein. No, you do not. Oh, yeah, I do. Did it you said do twenty three and me? Yeah. I do did the, the ancestry. Thing. I love the ancestry. I did ancestry too. <laughs> of course you did. I did. You're I like did I'm both. gonna spread my DNA everywhere. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, companies. I mean, you know, create multitudes of me. There's there's not enough of Jeffs around. I mean, keep that. Like I don't. And a lot of people get concerned. I don't worry about. Dave wants one like of that. them. My boyfriend's one of them. That's like I forced him to do it. I bought him a kit, and I'm like, guess what we're doing today? Oh wow. Scrape, you know, or spit or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, here you go. And he's like, you know, someone's going to show up at my door one day and knock, and they're they're going to be in, like, black glasses and a black suit and take me away because my DNA is not going to be, you know, the human race is overpopulating planet Earth, and sorry, you get you get to go on this bus. Is that what those people, is that what people like that think, though? They, they think that, no, but they think somebody's going to show up at yeah. their door. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's what he thinks. That's but, why they don't. I mean, to be fair, although it sounds insane. Mm-hmm. You can't fault him for thinking something like that. My sister's another one. She refuses to take ancestry because she's like, you have no idea what they're doing in DNA. And I'm like, okay, well, read the privacy policies. But at the same time, well, how would you, okay, you well, read what, a pri- privacy policy. What's that going to do? But what what could happen? What, like. They could do any time, any, you know, like who what? knows? Yeah. Like, like could they, uh, um. Uh, there's another, there's clearly at least 800 million different Jeffs out there. Because you've spread your DNA to all of these companies. So <laughs> walking around. And I love how you're getting concerned of like, well, what could they do? I, and I'm like I, everything, Jeff. <laughs> I can't I, I can't process you're officially why. Officially an alien on planet I Mars. Can't, I can't process why. Look at the family tree I've created here. <gasps> you should see mine. How many people do you have? Oh, I've got I don't need like a lot. Um <laughs> I mean it's it's pretty big and I it, have four hundred. Four hundred. Yeah. I don't have that. But, but, okay, so we've gone from simulation, but that's fine. <laughs> but the simulate, but anyway, simulation topic. But, but I find, so I just don't understand within the genetics of it all, this does connect to simulation. So, like, how, like, I don't, I hear people concerned about that. And I just wonder, I think this is an interesting. I think it's fair. Branch. And you know what? I think it's com- completely fair to be concerned about that, just like <laughs> it is when you download an app. 
Hmm. And you don't realize that all of your data that you put on there, you don't own anymore. Like when you make posts on Instagram, that's no longer your information. That's so, theirs. So it's the same. Um, I'm, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if one day something comes out that there was a, a security breach at Ancestor DNA or mm -hmm. if something happens with the, you know, wouldn't be surprised in this day and age. So then what happens? But I happily gave my saliva over to them, <laughs> knowing that anyways, because I want to do my family tree. Because you want to have a tree. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I will take the, I'll take the, um, I find that's, I find that so interesting. The risk of it. Yeah, that I, yeah. like I definitely take the risk. I mean, of look it. at the emails. Mm -hmm. We all have emails. How many of them have gotten hacked? That's an email. Can you imagine a company that has your DNA? Hey. Well, you don't think that's not going to get hacked? What do they do with you? What do they do once they have your DNA? What do they do with it? I I don't what know. They, what like like if they, someone had my DNA, I'd be like, so what are they? What are they doing? <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't really understand. Okay, so let's say I hear my DNA. Somebody's taking my DNA or somebody's taking your doing DNA. like tests on it. For what? To do all kinds. Of, what do they do with your organs when you're an organ donor? Give them to people. You know, they're probably taking your, your DNA and creating more DNA and making little science projects and little Frankensteins. But there could be little Frankenstein Jeffs running around. Running around. But... If I don't meet the Frankenstein, what does that mean? Like, I really, you want a Frankenstein Jeff running around? Well, if the Frankenstein's, uh, it doesn't affect me. <laughs> Let it run. <laughs> like, Meanwhile, it's zombie apocalypse out there of Jeff's eating people's brains, and you're like, huh. I would, I'd put a bunch of treadmills <laughs> around the house. Oh my have god! That, have you seen that meme? Yes. <laughs> Where they put the treadmills around the house to fight off the zombies. Okay. <laughs> Like if you put running treadmills around your house, oh my god! On the outside of that, it's house, so Halloween, Halloween of us. Zombies can't ever get to your house. By the way, um, um, <laughs> side note: we're having fun today. <laughs> side, <laughs> so, side note: mm -hmm. um, I paid tickets ahead of time to go see the Joker last week, and mm. I was like, "Oh, Joker! Me and Damon are gonna go date night." Go and I'm sitting down, we're sitting there, and I'm like, "The fuck? What, what is this? What is this?" And it's like blood and guts. And I'm like, are we sitting in zombie land, the movie? Oh. <laughs> and then I was like, am I at the wrong theater? Yeah. <laughs> we, I, we tried. We really did. We sat there for at least 10 minutes. And right. then it was like, I got to go. I cannot handle zombie land. And wait, so, so it was. Wait, it was. Zombieland? It was Woody Harrelson and zombie land. Movie. It was oh a completely gosh. different movie. And I was at the wrong cinema. And I was like. I mean, we missed the Joker, <laughs> and we watched 20 minutes of not so pleasant zombie, zombie land. land. Well, so I, I, I highly uh, do not recommend um, watching that. So you're still going to go see the Joker at some point. It's getting a lot of create all sorts of reviews. Um. Anyway, we've uh, digressed <laughs> quite a bit. That's um, okay, though. I think it's, it's going to be some. Some break in the bra of my brain explosion. I have to be able to get my brain matter back together again. When you're like, "Hey, Kira, there's probably ten billion of you out there," and I'm like, "Okay, I don't have time for a nap today, Jeff. Please, please." Hundred percent. So, Dear God, she's she's found she's found the brain. You know, because it gets mind blown for a while. Sure. Anyway, so she she finds it, and so yeah, I just you know. I don't know. Like, if somebody stole and made many Frankenstein's, I just, I, I, I don't really think about that stuff. Um, but you know, like, I and just, you know, don't they, go see Zombie Land. Don't because yeah. <laughs> that's all they do is that's... eat people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, um, it's so terrible. Sorry, I must end. It's not good. So I will not see. <laughs> I will not see Zombie Land. So back to gosh, where do we simulation? Go? Yeah. So do we continue on packing simulation, or are we? Or should we just live our lives like and be like, who cares if it's simulation? Just continue with your life. What? Why even have an hour to, or a half hour to even talk about simulation if it doesn't? I think both are important. So. Both. But how is that possible? How do you? I think that you. I think that you. I think that you. 
live your life in the present moment and you take life as it is and you take in what's around you and enjoy who you are, what you're doing, your environment, try not to get so stressed about things happening around you all the time you live in that present moment while, whenever you feel like it, asking yourself, you know, questions, philosophical questions, ask yourself, you know, it, it's not, it's not bad to, to challenge yourself um, intellectually while living in the present moment. Well, I like that. That's so, a good, that's a good way to, to view it. And I think, I think you hit the nail on the head where I think we're so consumed about the future and it's like, Oh, I got a plan 10 years from now or a year yeah. from now. I'm like, Oh my God, just get through the week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like I can just create a goal for the day, one goal, and then get through that. Cause you don't know what, what the universe is going to look like in a year. You don't even know what your life's going to look like. You don't know what computer program has already set up for you. So, <laughs> you know, um, oh, what wish I did have about the simulation. Does that take away, um, uh, are you in control of your program? Well, that's a big question. Some people believe, I mean, that's a question of free will. Well, that, well, some, right. Some people who discuss simulation theory don't believe in free will, and some do believe in free will. That is something we honestly just do not. I mean, I, I meditate, and there's the, a lot of attraction, and I do a lot of that stuff, and I have seen it proven over and over again. That, I mean, all the time. Um, the minute I focus on manifesting and law of attraction, it it's like right there. And that's what makes me think that it's like you are in control of your programming. You are in control of your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, all of that. You're thinking you're in control of your own reality. And if you don't like your reality, then you can actually change it. Um, that's my that's my belief because I've done it too many times. And too many times, it's actually proven itself. But you still could be what you think you're controlling. It could still be controlled. Okay, that's enough, Jeff. So this was an amazing <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so, so that's <laughs> my, my my head. So that be careful of the brain. <laughs> the brain. So it's just for the third time. So you could make it being controlled mm -hmm. by being controlled, and then that person's being controlled. Yeah. So, so ultimately, think... who's Mister Controller? Right. So if or you think she, your thoughts are your own thoughts, like I'm making affirmations, I'm doing my own thoughts, this is me. Even though you're saying that, something could be controlling you saying, this is me. Hey, as long as when I'm like, hey, awesome. I need a check right now, I need this check that I've been waiting for right now, and I get it yeah. that day, yeah. and it, those things happen, I don't, give a, I don't give a shit where it's coming from. <laughs> you don't you care know, where like, it's coming from. Law of attraction, if I'm creating it, if my little... My little algorithm friend who's creating the universe is doing it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Man or woman. <laughs> However, Thank I don't care. You. <laughs> like... <laughs> Thank you, Supreme. <laughs> Supreme simulation of Mother everything <laughs> we thank you for controlling it all no uh, i think that's so what do you believe what do i believe well i still consider myself presbyterian and christian um but so, i do, do free well well I, I believe like i don't believe that like i look at while being christian i also believe that you have to look at logic and data and what people have proven. And they've proven this 99% chance that we are at 99.999% we are in a simulation. So I take that into effect that it seems to be very likely. And then on top of that, as far as free will, I mean, I can sit here and say that I, I mean, I just don't, I don't know for sure. Are you in control of your life? I, you know, I can't say if there's free will. Am I in control of my life? Yes. As far as I know, I'm in control of my life as far as I it's know. It's the Frankenstein Jeff that's controlling Jeff. <laughs> it's, I mean, a Frankenstein Jeff could be controlling Jeff. But yes, I believe in it to the degree that I know to believe in it. Any of us could just sit here and say, oh, well, something else is controlling me. There's no free will. It's room, you know, but we well, don't, we don't that know don't, that. The people that don't believe in free will believe there's a higher... Yes. Purpose that there's a reason, you know, that's doing it for them. Yes. That's which right. Which I have a very hard time with. 
What do most religions believe? Um, I think do, it's... Is Christianity free will or no free will? I don't know. I haven't gone to church since, since I was like 12. I yeah, I wonder how that is across the spectrum. <laughs> um, so, yes, I would say that, I mean, I believe I have control to the degree that I can believe it. Like it's like a Confucius. That is wow. Mind blowing so, again. So deep, Jeff. <laughs> I just I just blow her mind, and we have fun here, and good times, everybody. All right. Well, we won't continue this topic because we could continue this for the next eight hours. We could keep going forever. This was fun, though. This was fun. Like a really kind of fun one today. We They're like bringing in some stu stuff that's like not getting too intellectual. Yeah, we like to kind of keep present moment. Because everybody wants their brain intact afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> why. We have to keep Kira's brain intact. <laughs> and everyone else, because I can imagine if my brain explodes, that means everyone else is exploding, okay. except yours, because yours is like, well, what if? <laughs> and I'm like, no. It's the it's the ENTP in me. It's the P that perception. Oh, it's is definitely the, big the P. What if the the Myers Briggs the, the P for, for sure? Which are you? E I can't remember. I can't remember. I N F L M N O P. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. She's gonna do her Myers Briggs next week's topic. We're going to discuss Myers Briggs. Done. Personality tests. We're gonna do, do you believe them? Do you not? So if you know your Myers Briggs, put it in the comments. Oh yeah. And we can discuss your personality next week. Write it in the comments. You can take it. There's a website, 16personalities.com. The number 16personalities.com. It's super fun. They have really cute graphics. Kira and I are both going to take it again this week and let you know what ours are. And we're going to discuss the foundation of this. We're starting a foundation? Myers-Briggs oh. personality that test. For Frankenstein. People eaten by Frankenstein just. And the little Frankensteins are running around probably of me within the simulation. Stay safe and out there. Stay safe. Episode 23. Jeff and Kira. Launch Radio. We'll see you guys next week. Here, Happy Halloween. Here at Launch Radio, we are the future. The future is Launch Radio. Thank you, everybody. Later.